now that we understand a little bit about MO theory, let's look at let's look at MO theory for a conjugated diene. So here I have the dot structure for one, three butadiene. So this is one, two, three, and four. So one, three butadiene in the S cis conformation. Now each of those four carbons on one, three butadiene is sp2 hybridized. So if I look at this carbon this carbon, this carbon, and this one, they're all sp2 hybridized, which means that each of those carbons has three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one unhybridized p orbital. So let me go ahead and draw those on the, uh, on the skeleton over here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, the single bonds. So this carbon is bonded to two hydrogens like that. And this back carbon here is bonded to only one hydrogen and one hydrogen and two hydrogens. So all of those single bonds that you see represented there are the uh, came from the sp2 hybridized orbitals. Now each one of those carbons also has an unhybridized p orbital. So let me go ahead and draw that too. So this is an unhybridized p orbital. Right, each one of those carbons is going to get an unhybridized p orbital like that. And if I were to complete the uh, the picture, there's a there's a pi bond between carbons one and two. So we know that pi bonds come from the side by side overlap of these p orbitals. So I could think about a pi bond being here between carbons one and two, and also a pi bond being over here between carbons three and four. So these are your these are your your pi bonds over here. So here's one pi bond, and here's another one. So for a total of four pi electrons, so we have four pi electrons that we have to worry about. And those electrons um, are, are, are somewhat spread out throughout the entire molecule. So here we have them drawn between carbons one and one, two, and three and four. Uh, but you'll see with, with MO theory, uh, there is a little bit of electron density between carbons C2 and C3. So we'll see that in a minute. So right now we're still thinking about atomic orbitals. So those p orbitals that we drew are atomic orbitals. And so we have four of them. So we have four, four atomic orbitals, which are our p orbitals. According to MO theory, the atomic orbitals, when the molecule forms, are going to, are going to recombine and form molecular orbitals. And as many molecular orbitals form as atomic orbitals that you started out with, so if you start with four atomic orbitals, you're going to get four molecular orbitals. Okay, so once again, four atomic orbitals are going to combine, cease to exist, produce four molecular orbitals. Now, the math of this is, of course, extremely complicated quantum math and uh, way, way beyond the scope of this video here. So the four molecular orbitals that are produced, we're going to draw them. They're going to look a lot like p orbitals, but they're not really. Okay, so four molecular orbitals produced. So here in the diagram are the skeletons for the four molecular orbitals that we're going to draw. And so let's go ahead and, um, and start with the one down here. So we're going to go and draw in what look like p orbitals, but these are not p orbitals, right? Oh, this, this picture represents one of the possible molecular orbitals here. And in this one, in this one, let's go ahead and draw in some phases. So in this, in this molecular orbital, um, these phases all down here are red, and then these phases up here are blue, like that. And since, and since we're going to get side-by-side -side overlap, right, of everything in the same phase, right, you could think about this molecular orbital as being a picture where the electrons are delocalized uh, over the entire molecule. So same thing down here, right, you get some, you get the electrons are going to be delocalized throughout the entire molecule. So this is one of the possible molecular orbitals. So the phases are the same, the phases are, are, are symmetric, right, so electrons is waves are going to spread out over the entire molecule. And you can see now when you look at uh, carbon 2 and carbon 3, so let me go ahead and see if we can highlight that here. So carbon 2 and carbon 3, now you can see there is a little bit of double bond character between these two carbons. So the delocalization of electrons um, between those two carbons means that it's going to, it's going to be a little bit shorter than you would, uh, than you would expect um, for what looks like a single bond in our dot structure. All right, so this, this accounts for some of the extra stability we see in a conjugated uh, diene. 
So let's go to the next molecular orbital. So once again, these uh, these look like p orbitals that I'm drawing in here, but they're not. They're just they're just a a, a shorthand way of of representing this molecular orbital. So the next one up is going to have one node. And this node is between carbons 2 and carbons 3. So if I go ahead and draw the node right there. Uh, let's go ahead and put our phases in. Again, the, the fancy quantum math predicts these, uh, predicts these phases, and we're certainly not going to bother with that. We're just going to look at the colors. Right? So for this molecular orbital, we have uh, our blue phases. And then right here, we have our red, like that. So let me go ahead and put those in. And so when we when we think about the electrons for this molecular orbital, right, we can we can see that these are the same phase. So we can we can see that there's some electron density here. There's some electron density over here. And um, and of course the blue phases as well. So there's some electron density in here and some electron density in here. And notice between carbons two and three, the phases don't match up, right? If I if I look at these phases, right, this phase right here is blue and this phase right here is red, and the same thing down here, red and blue. And so and so those phases um, are not going to overlap. So there is no double bond character between carbon two and carbon three. So there's one node in this molecular orbital. We move to the next molecular orbital right here. So let's go ahead and, and once again sketch in the beginnings of our molecular orbital. And uh, for this one, uh, so we had uh, we had one, so ne zero nodes for this one, so zero nodes for this one, one node for this molecular orbital, and so we're going to get two nodes for this one. And so this time our nodes are going to be between there and there. So if I go ahead and put in my colors, right, my phases, I'm going to say that these are red, like that. And, and these are red in here. And then for my blue, right, this therefore is blue, and this is blue, and this is blue. So now when I'm thinking about uh, where my electrons are going to be for this molecular orbital, I can see that these two phases can overlap since they're the since they're the same color here, and I can see that these are also going to be able to overlap since they are the same phase. And once again, um, for my nodes, right there, there is no overlap because the phases are different. And then finally, my my last my last molecular orbital. Go ahead and and sketch that in here. All right, so for this one, uh, we're going to have three nodes, of course. So I get three nodes for this one. And so the nodes would, would be between all of the carbons this time. And so therefore, none of the phases should match up. So when we do it this time, we're going to alternate. So we're going to alternate. This one would be blue. This one would be blue. So we go up, down, and that means that the phases will not overlap. So when I put the red in there, it'll be, be a little bit more obvious right? that none of the phases match up this time. And so that's one of our possible molecular orbitals. So now we've done it. We've, we've taken four atomic orbitals, and those four atomic orbitals, when the molecule combined to form, uh, the, the, the atomic orbitals, the p orbitals, cease to exist to produce four molecular orbitals. And in these molecular orbitals, uh, right, out of four molecular orbitals, two of these are going to be bonding molecular orbitals. And uh, that would be these two down here. Okay, so these two right here are the bonding molecular orbitals, like that. And then these two up here would be the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So I have anti-bonding molecular orbitals, like that. And when I think about my original dot structure, we said there were two pi bonds, and each pi bond contains two electrons for a total of four pi electrons. And so when I'm thinking about where to put my electrons into my molecular orbitals, I can just turn this into an energy diagram here, so increasing energy this way. I have four pi electrons, and I know that those pi electrons are going to go into the lowest energy orbital available. And so that, of course, would be, would be the, the two bonding orbitals. So I have four pi electrons. I have to think about pairing up the spins 
things, right? It's analogous to electron configurations. So that's two of my pi electrons, and then I have two more right here, like that. So my four pi electrons occupy the two bonding molecular orbitals. And then there's one more thing I want to note on this diagram, and uh, and 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 that's the uh, the highest occupied molecular orbital, meaning the molecular orbital that has electrons, that's the highest energy. So that's this one right here. So this, this one right here is the highest occupied uh, molecular orbital. So that's this one right here. And then you'll, you'll hear this referred to as HOMO. So this is the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital. And then this orbital right up here is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So let me go ahead and write that. The lowest un occupied, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, also called the LUMO. So this is the LUMO. So we have the LUMO and the HOMO, and those are referred to as the frontier orbitals. So when we, when we think about how MO theory relates to the Diels-Alder reaction in the next video, we're going to think about the frontier orbitals and how they interact.